All right, we're down here in the basement in uh, Garfield Heights on August 3rd, and I'm going to start going all of my going over all of my observations and findings here. Um, so starting out with a couple things that are good, we've got the uh, copper water line coming in. It's copper, uh, which is pretty typical here for the 50s, but that's a lot better than the older lead piping or galvanized steel piping that we do still tend to find in Cleveland, Garfield Heights, and Maple Heights. Um, as well as obviously any of the older builds like Shaker or Cleveland Heights. Um, the concrete block foundation walls have a little bit of shrinkage and settlement cracking here and there all around. Most of these cracks are less than an eighth of an inch thick. Um, they don't travel to the floor and uh, they really don't appear to be much of a uh, significant issue here. With that said, um, the laundry tub does leak just a little bit here when you switch it on. I don't think I've seen many of these uh, 50s laundry tubs that don't leak anymore by 2020, but nonetheless, it's something that could be repaired by a plumber, it's the leaking laundry tub faucet. We're over here um, in the in the uh, electrical panel. You've got your main 100 amp breaker. That's the main shutoff. It looks to be in good shape. The panel is configured properly, meaning that the neutral and the ground wires are pretty much all on the same bus bar. They're connected via the uh, little jumper here. And so our neutrals and grounds are bound together. We're also bonded to the panel enclosure with that little uh, green bond screw and the bonding jumper. That'll connect the neutrals and the ground terminals to the panel enclosure, which is just the way that a main panel should be wired. Uh, there's really nothing to complain about and nothing worth calling an electrician for in this panel. However, if you wanted to be a little nitpicky, most of these, um, or it looks like one of these uh, knob and tube circuits are on a 20 amp breaker instead of the typical 15 amp breaker, which is uh, what nowadays you typically want most knob and tube. Uh, circuits to be fed from is a 15 amp breaker instead of a 20. So if you really wanted to be nitpicky you could replace this uh, 20 amp tandem breaker with a um, 15 amp tandem breaker here and since this is a uh, Siemens brand panel you always want to make sure that all the um, breakers in here are manufactured by Siemens and that's just the same way that you know Chevy only wants Chevy parts, Ford only wants Ford parts, Siemens only wants Siemens parts inside of their panel. Um, to to maintain the warranty and it's mainly just a warranty thing from the manufacturer's instructions nonetheless the only two nitpicky things would be considering to replace this 20 amp uh, tandem breaker with a 15 amp and also you're really not supposed to have a neutral and a ground below the same screw on that uh, bus terminal again very very minor I only see about two of them that are that are combined under each under one screw again I don't think I'd even really worry about calling an electrician for that kind of stuff also this is the GFCI breaker for your garage I tested that and reset it, it looks to be operating properly so very little to complain about besides two nitpicky things in the panel really wouldn't worry about calling an electrician for those kinds of items because they're very common I see them all the time I really don't see much damage that come from those two nitpicky items but nonetheless it's worth noting um, leaky laundry tub faucet like we had just talked about uh, overhead, we're looking at the um, overhead floor joists and subflooring and the steel support columns here all appear to be intact and the home structurally solid and sound um, except for one little item I want to point out. Uh, if you look along, this is the right side wall if you're looking at the uh, house from the street and I can start to see just a little bit of uh, horizontal cracking running across uh, this wall. Now I already leveled, put a level on it and it's relatively um, plumb. What happens is uh, since we saw all that reverse grade coming down towards the home on the outside of the on the outside of the house, what happens is that consistently wet soil will adhere to the uh, wall and it'll freeze and kind of expand, lifting this wall up a little bit and cracking it. And then it, you know, once the uh, spring comes, it'll thaw, set the wall back down. It just leaves behind this little crack. This crack is not really structurally compromising of the home whatsoever, but it does show that we get a lot of wet soil sitting up against this right side of the home. Um, also, further evidence is this yellowing of the paint that you can see right here. A little bit of water staining on the right side at the wall and the floor joint, and also a little bit more yellowing here. And this is the front right corner of the basement. So all that shows me is that water is coming down up against the house, sitting up against the corner, and kind of seeping in. Now it doesn't look like we have a lot of actual full-on water intrusion here, but what we do have is this yellowing, bubbling of the wall paint, which just shows that we have some past evidence of moisture sitting up against the wall. 
So in summary of the crack, in order to stop any further structural movement, I would consider regrading the slope of the yard away from the home just to deter water from sitting up against this right side foundation wall of the home. <coughs> Again, um, I think some of that has caused a little bit more of this settlement and stress cracking, but again, I don't think that this is anything to worry about or be concerned about. I also don't think that the horizontal crack is very much to concern yourself with. However, um, the one precaution I would do is regrade the slope of the yard away from the house for about six feet or so on the right side of the home to stop this cracking from ever getting worse. Uh, with that said, over here at the furnace, I can see that the uh, filter is just a little bit dirty and dusty. So we're gonna say, hey, go ahead, replace the furnace. Um, with that said, the air conditioner has about 19 degrees of a temperature drop, which is great. We look for 14 to 22 degrees. So 19 is right in the uh, right in the range here. And if you can see, the AC is actually, I don't know how well this shows up, the AC is actually pumping air out to the tune of 55.9 degrees Fahrenheit, which is excellent. Um, so the AC unit, even though it's 25 years old and it may be nearing the end of its service life, is uh, operating properly right now from a cooling standpoint. However, because we could tell that uh, the fan, the blower fan, seems to only kick on when the thermostat fan selection is set to on and not to auto, that's a little bit of an issue um, because that'll leave your, your fan running 24-7, which, you know, could kind of lower, shorten the life of the fan. Um, so what I would do is I would call an HVAC technician and tell them that uh, my thermostat doesn't operate properly when the fan selection is set to auto and it only works when it's set to on and having an HVAC technician come on out here and repair that. It's most likely just a wiring issue um, and while they're out here, the furnace here appears to have been built from 19, in 1978, meaning that it's about 42 years old. It's running pretty well um, we're going to go ahead and test it after that we finish up with the ac but even though it'll most likely turn on and fire on just fine it's very dirty and dusty and so what i would do is have an hvac technician come on out here and uh, service the unit just because the dirty dusty furnaces are going to be the number one reason that a furnace decides to break down on you in the middle of the night of the of the heating season so again in summary of the ac and the furnace I would go ahead and have an HVAC tech come on out here, clean and service the furnace, and also repair the uh, wiring item that is preventing the AC from operating properly uh, when the thermostat lower fan is set to auto, And because right now it's only working when it's set to on. And again, we don't want to use it in on all the time just so it doesn't kill, uh, shorten the life expectancy of the blower motor. With that said, we're over here still at the uh, hot water tank. Hot water tank is from 2013, so it's only about seven years old. It looks to be operating just fine, properly. Um, doesn't appear to be backdrafting or anything like that at the time of the uh, consultation. However, installing a carbon monoxide detector somewhere around here at breathing level is always gonna be recommended, um, just in case the hot water tank were to ever backdraft in the future. Now, you can see a little bit of wet leakage and rust going on on this seven-year-old hot water tank. It's coming from, uh, uh, leaking water supply pipe connection right here. This is right up above the hot water tank. So it's leaking down onto the hot water tank and creating a lot of rust. That needs to be repaired because A, nobody likes leaks, and B, we don't wanna shorten the life expectancy of this young seven-year-old hot water tank. So again, um, getting a plumber out here to repair this uh, plumbing connection would be super important. As we come around the uh, hot water tank here. I can also see that the TPR valve and the discharge pipe terminates more than 12 inches above the ground. And these are always by code supposed to terminate about six inches from the ground. And what would happen is if this hot water tank ever discharged a bunch of scalding water from the TPR valve right here, um, this would prevent anyone standing nearby from getting uh, scalded from the super hot water. So with that said, you know, it's pretty cheap and inexpensive to install a discharge pipe that reaches down six inches to the ground. With that said, uh, this would be the main clean out here where you could um, have your main sanitary line scoped and or snaked out just in case you ever get a line blockage. Um, other than the uh, TPR valve discharge pipe being a little too short and a little leak over here, the hot water tank does appear to be operating properly although I can see just a few gaps around the uh, 
hot water tank metal flue as it enters the chimney. And you can always seal these gaps up with like a fire caulk or something to just prevent those exhaust gases from sneaking their way back into the, uh, into the home. And so with that said, uh, those are a couple little tips regarding the hot water tank. Uh, when I come into the basement bathroom, uh, the basement bathroom does have working GFCI. This outlet is downstream from one of the other basement GFCI outlets, so that is good. Um, I can see a bunch of water kind of sitting on the scale down here and the floor is a little wet. When I look up directly, uh, the sink pipe, right as it enters the uh, basin of the shower right here, it was leaking a little bit. And that's why I always run those toilet, I'm sorry, run the plumbing fixtures for a good 10 to 15 minutes is to just really simulate someone using these uh, plumbing items. And uh, if we see any leaks, you know, I don't want anything to leak, but we want to find it and we want to catch it now here today. And so in summary, we've got a little bit of a leak coming from the shower drain pipe just below the shower, in addition to the one right above the hot water tank. While we're on leaks, um, the basement toilet right here also appears to be leaking from the uh, mounting screws that connect the upper tank to the lower bowl. And you can see just a little staining here. So again, getting a plumber to come on in here, repair the leak above the hot water tank, repair the leak from below that shower right there, and also repair or even just consider replacing this older toilet uh, would be a great idea just because you know, these leaks are gonna to lead to a bigger repair issue. I can see a little bit of um, corrosion on the drain pipe here in the basement bathroom sink, but nothing's actively leaking right here. And I also ran the shower for a good 10, 15 minutes again with no observed leakage anywhere around the shower or behind it. So with that said, um, that's coming to a, a close of all the major mechanicals. While I'm sitting here in the uh, back right corner of the home, I can see a little bit more stair step crack.